Hey y'all, before uh, you guys listen to the midweek devotion, I just want to let you guys know that uh, this Sunday is our farewell Sunday for Chris, where we're going to celebrate the amazing ministry that he did. So yeah, make sure that you're there if you are ever around Highfields in the years of Chris leading Highfields Church, or if you just know Chris and want to support him and bless him, feel free to come. Also, the following Sunday, uh, instead of me preaching, we're going to be hearing from Darren Painter from Prison Fellowship Australia. So I'm really excited to have him come out on February 21st and share with us and let us know some of the amazing work that Prison Fellowship Australia does. So I really encourage you to come to that as well. But really, make sure this Sunday, if if Chris has impacted you at all in his ministry, I really encourage you to be there. And I encourage you to come wearing your footy jerseys because Chris loves footy. So we're going to be wearing some footy jerseys. I think he told me he's got a Cowboys jersey that I can borrow. And then afterwards, we're going to have some pizza because I've heard that Chris loves pizza too. And I kind of like pizza myself. So yeah, feel free to come. Uh, and we really hope you enjoy uh, this midweek devotional. It's awesome to be doing another midweek devotional with y'all. Uh, this month as a church, we're kind of diving into the book of Jonah, which is a really beautiful book. It's only a short book as well, which if you're not a big reader, you know, then you don't have much to read. It's only, a, you know, four chapters, but there's so much in it. And on Sunday, uh, I preached about Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 to 16. So where Jonah's kind of thrown off this bit. And today, I kind of want to look at what happens after. I've just uploaded a blog post this week about verse 17, which talks about, you know, and the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And I kind of unpacked that whole three days and three nights. It's like a motif in ancient cultures, kind of symbolizing like a journey to Shalom or the the underworld or the netherworld or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of indicating that. It's not so much of a a time spent within the belly. It's, It's more of an indication of something deeper than that. And if you want to read more of that, feel free to go to our blog post. But I want to unpack what happens while Jonah's in this belly of the fish, while he's on this journey, you know, wherever it is, this this journey that he's on, that he finds himself in after being thrown off a ship. And this is what we read in, in chapter two, and I just want to read that with you guys. This is what it says in the ESV version. Uh, it should come up on the screen uh, if you got a different Bible translation you like to read, then yeah, feel free to read that one instead. But let's dive into what happens. And this is what we read. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Shalom I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the hearts of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. 
And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. And I, I love that, that whole journey. We get this picture of, you know, Jonah being thrown in the water and starting to sink by the way he describes it. He sinks so far to the bottom, pretty much. He, you know, death has kind of come for him. The waters are coming around him. And in this last moment, he kind of remembers God. And he talks about how this, you know, fish was kind of like appointed to rescue him. It was appointed to, to, you know, come and help him in this moment. So he cried out in the belly of Shiloh. And, you know, on this journey to where he felt disconnected from anything, like he was trapped in his own hell, he cries out and God hears him. And God provides a way. And I, I love this part of Jonah. I love it because I think we can all have moments in life when we're trapped in our own hell. You know, uh, whatever it is, something of our own creation, choices we make, or something out of our control, circumstances that we don't have any power over. We can have these moments where we feel like there's no point. There's no hope. It's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to do anything. And in these moments, we often cry out to God. And I think it's important for us to remember that God hears us in these moments. The story of Jonah is proof of that. It's proof of the fact that God hears. God doesn't forsake. I love how the last line of, you know, this, this prayer Jonah is praying is salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. I love that. Our God is a God who rescues. We so often forget that. And we so often forget that salvation belongs to Him, belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to us. We're not the ones to judge or figure out how it all looks. It belongs to God. Because our God is a God of rescue, He's a God of salvation. And the story of Jonah points to that because up until, you know, this moment, Jonah hasn't really done anything God's asked. He's undeserving of it. He basically got told to do something, ran away from it, went the other way, not just ran away. He went like the opposite direction to as far as he could. And God creates a big storm that happens on a ship and the winds are blowing and all this stuff, and Jonah's sleeping while the storm's going on. While everyone else on the ship and all the other sailors are panicking, throwing luggage off, the ship looks like it's about to break up, we read that Jonah goes down and goes to sleep. The captain has to go and wake him up. And he's kind of like, hey, what are you doing? You know, you sleeper, get up, ask your God, maybe he'll help. But Jonah goes back up, and then... Stuff doesn't get any better. The sailors are so concerned and they know this kind of, they can sense the divine moment. So they start casting lots, right? To see who's at fault. And the lots fall on Jonah. And when they do, Jonah just, you know, tells them, oh, throw me off. You know, get, get me out of here. That will help you guys. I still don't have to do what God wants, right? Because if I'm thrown in the water, I think Jonah's pretty smart. He probably, he's, he knows what's going to happen. More than likely, he's, He's going to die. So he doesn't have to do what God asks. He can still get out of it. And he can look after these sailors. Because he notices our shared humanity and the importance of loving others. So these sailors throw him out. And then we read of this prayer. We read of the fish swallowing him up. And I, I love this story because even in my own walk I know I get it wrong sometimes as a follower of Christ and I too often instead of showing love and compassion and empathy sometimes I mess up sometimes instead of doing my part to remove barriers and cultural boundaries and trying to support one another 
Sometimes I'm at fault for building a backup. And I am far from perfect. And I love this story because it, it takes the focus off of us and our perfection. It's not about that. And this story, it's about God's steadfast love and his grace and his mercy that knows no boundaries and his heart to rescue us. And I, I pray that as you go out this week and do whatever you know the week has in store for you, that you just remember that. Remember that truth. Maybe sit down in your own time and you know read chapter two and read that prayer. And sit with it after you read it. Reflect on it. Because it's a beautiful prayer. And if we are aware of some of the stuff going around before Jonah says his prayer, it really magnifies God's steadfast love, his grace, his mercies that know no boundaries and God's amazing heart to rescue because salvation belongs to the Lord. Thank you so much for watching this and may God's grace and peace be with you.